vapor power cycles, dealing with the Carnot cycle, the Carnot power cycle. Basically, if you have a heat engine operating between a hot thermal reservoir and a cold thermal reservoir, the hot being at a temperature TH and the cold being at a temperature TC, and the hot being supplied to this heat engine operating in a cycle, that's a little arrow going around operating in a cycle, that you have QH coming in and you want to com com convert as much of that, the purpose of the heat engine is to produce as much work. You're going to convert as much of that heat transfer from a high temperature <coughs> source to work, but you must throw away some heat or some energy to a low temperature. That's a restriction of the second law. And they found that the thermal efficiency, the maximum, would be the Carnot thermal efficiency is 1 minus the, high, the low temperature Tc divided by the high temperature Th. That was worked out for a, uh, a gas, an ideal gas in a piston cylinder, where this gas undergoes a set of processes and all of the processes are reversible and you can think of the first going from state one to state two the first process being isothermal expansion followed by adiabatic expansion then isothermal compression and adiabatic compression so you see the parallels there's two expansions two compressions isothermal adiabatic isothermal adiabatic we can plot that on both the pressure volume diagram as well as a temperature entropy diagram for this cycle, this ideal gas Carnot cycle. So on a pressure volume diagram, put two isotherms, a temperature high and a temperature cold or low temperature. And the first expansion is isothermal, so it's along an isotherm and it's expanding. If it's a power cycle, start one to state two, and you expand from one to two. Now, if you continue the expansion, the volume will can continue to increase. But if it's adiabatic, there's no heat transfer to keep the temperature up. The temperature will drop down to state three. Now, you turn it around and start the compression. You go three to four. It's isothermal compression, followed by adiabatic compression, which makes it very hot and jumps up with a high temperature. So that's what the Carnot ideal gas cycle looks like on a PV diagram. How about a TS? It's easy to think about TH and TC, the two high temperatures. And you have a isothermal expansion, so that's going to be a heat transfer in to keep it hot. So with the heat transfer in, you're bringing in entropy. The entropy increases from 1 to 2. Then you have adiabatic expansion, which drops it to that low temperature, and followed by 3 to 4 isothermal compression and four back to one so you have a box a box on a TS diagram does all that look familiar you seen that good good now you can also have a Carnot vapor power cycle well what do you do uh, on the temperature entropy diagram you uh, have the box under the dome and so you think of the dome coming in and it's traditional that you put the box the top part of the box at the corner so that it hits saturated liquid and saturated vapor states and also because we're going to be doing with vapor power cycles the, the ordering of the numbers isn't that critical but this upper right corner state one followed by state two followed by state three and state four. So state one is saturated vapor, and state three, oops, I got two state threes. State four is saturated liquid. So how does this occur? Well, think of inside of this uh, 
box here that's interfacing with the high temperature reservoir, T sub H, and receiving Q sub H, as well as interacting with the low temperature reservoir, T sub C receiving Q sub C, you have four components that make up the vapor power cycle. You have the boiler, which receives QH, and so it boils. Then it goes into the turbine and expands. Then you go into the condenser, and from the condenser you go into a, a pump. So the four components that make up the inner workings of that heat engine, that Carnot vapor power cycle heat engine, are boiler, turbine, condenser, pump. The only two places where there's heat transfer is in the condenser. The fluid, working fluid, is rejecting heat at a temperature TC. And in the boiler, it's receiving heat at temperature TH. You have a net power out or network, which is the difference between what the turbine produces and the pump has to consume. It's hard to put that in there. Let me put the word pump somewhere else. Put pump there and put W consumed by the pump and the net out will be the turbine out minus what is required to drive the pump. Okay, so if you do the mathematics, uh, you can also find that the thermal efficiency of a Carnot vapor power cycle does still go to 1 minus Tc over Th. You still Carnot vapor power cycle is maximally efficient but it's impractical. Why? Because of that pump. What does that pump ingesting at state three? Two-phase mixture. How many pumps like two-phase mixtures? None. Pumps like liquids. Well, how about a compressor? Compressors like gases. So it's not a good compressor and it's not a good pump. Also, what's the outlet of that pump at state four? Saturated liquid. So definitely it's not a condenser, I mean a compressor. Compressor likes gases and it would like to put out gas as well. So this is impractical. So what they do is they modify it to have a practical Carnot and it's then called the ideal Rankine cycle. So what do you, how do you modify it? You bring state three over and you condense it. True? And then from state three to state four, Four is very, very close to three because it's on a line of constant pressure. This is what a line of constant pressure looks like on a TS diagram. Likewise, the line of constant pressure looks like this. So this would be your high pressure. This is the low pressure. And so state three is very close and state four are very close on a TS diagram. But they're different because they're at different um, Pressures. All right. Yes, you take it all the way. So it's saturated liquid, and then that's what a pump likes, liquids. So that's the first liquid you get is saturated liquid. It's subcooled liquid. Yeah, state four is subcooled liquid. Mm-hmm.